Deep into our conversation, the sun began to rise, and the phantom explained that it could only linger at night. The moon seemed to be the only way it was seen. While I was curious, I did not ask further. As the streams of sunshine rounded over the mountain, the glowing figure before me melted away once more. We promised to meet again tonight. That promise was enough to make my heart flutter. I had not felt true excitement in so long. It was nearly foreign. I drug myself to bed, and like always, the dreams came in like a flood. They overpowered my contentment and smothered my giddiness with ease. Fear rushed through me as I looked down into that void. The one I knew was swallowing me up one night at a time. It spoke gently to put me back in my place. My body was losing its mind and wasn't long for the world. It stroked my deepest resentment and relit it, encouraging those flames to consume my entire self. For the day, I was blanketed in darkness so deep that my eyes were blinded. My sense of belonging was snuffed out. The suffocating sensation was familiar. It felt more like home than anything else. The soul, my soul, hovered just above the body and gazed on as the mortal struggle came to its end. The vividness of seeing my life cut short was enough to jerk my sensations to alert and awaken me. I sat up, covered in cold trails of sweat down my back. The hairs on my arms stood on end. I felt the intense trembling crumpling the sheets underneath me. Was I really meant to perish? No solid answer came to the question I asked my cabin. I didn't expect one. I closed my eyes tight and breathed in the cooling afternoon air. It stung and brought my attention to the dwindling fire. With a sluggish groan, I stood and moved to add more wood before night fell. Night! Night was soon. I rushed to the glass shards I'd managed to piece together into a mirror and checked my ruffled hair. Though it was a mess, it could be fixed. I took the time and tidied it up some, even though the voice lingering from my dreams still doubted the phantom's appearance. With a shake, I jarred my thoughts and went back to my reflection to finish up. Blues and blacks took over the last pink hues of sundown, bleeding together until the stars were all that was left. That evening, the moon was beautiful. It sat high in the sky and shone down on the woodlands I called home. The soft glow was enough to see the steps I took down to the water. I was timid. That echo kept saying it wouldn't come, that it was a fabrication of my insanity. Over and over and over it screamed until the voice of the figment stomped it all away. Good evening. Ah, so I wasn't crazy after all. One look up and the pale white mist of a form floated just above me, slowly descending until it rippled on the water. I did not know if you would come again. I broke the heavy silence first. It laughed, a carefree and joyous laugh. It warmed me to my toes to hear it. You mustn't doubt me so early into our friendship. With a small tisk at me, it came to settle on the shore. You look awfully nice tonight, it said with a hint of laughter still in its voice. Thank you. I didn't want to meet you looking a mess, I replied sheepishly, fingers nervously twitching in my lap. You must dress up for yourself and no one else. 
that brought my attention to it and left my brow a little furrowed. An outline of a hand reached out and rubbed away the wrinkles I was forcing in my face. It was a warm touch, just as I had thought it would be. What was that for? I barely managed to sputter out a scoff. The phantom laughed again. I just think a smile suits you more. It had been a long time since I last heard a compliment. It wasn't unwanted, but it wasn't comfortable either. What an odd sensation it was. I left good enough alone, and we spent yet another late night talking. We spoke of my past and the present and what I wanted for my future. The Phantom didn't have many memories. That was something it wanted back. It wanted memories to feel whole again. I understood the yearning part. For the first time, in a long time, I felt like a person and not just the Witch of the Forest. In my time exiled, I had learned to hate myself. It was a self-loathing rooted deep into my soul. I was no longer a human. I was the monster not even the worst of society dared to be around. That alone was enough to drive someone to madness. And I was several miles down that road already. Before I could hit the end of the road, a hand was extended and a quilt was wrapped around my ice-cold heart. The only direction I had left to go was to recovery. I began to steadily crave our time together next to the waters. It was the only calm in the storm of my life as it was. The chill of winter was bone deep, but the warmth from our conversation kept the tremble in my heart at a standstill. That feeling of unease never really went away, but for a short period of time, in the dead of night, underneath the stars, I felt whole again. I felt like a person. So much of my humanity had been robbed by the seething feelings of resentment that lingered. It had made me crazed, and with one voice, just one voice, I was dragged back from the depths of despair, back to the surface of insanity. Tonight was no different, as the phantom told stories of the forest. I listened as that voice carried on the wind and surrounded me like a soft blanket. Above us, the moon was barely a sliver. Tomorrow, the new moon would come. Your eyes say you are no longer present. The voice spoke gently and brought my gaze back. I'm sorry, Phantom. I was just looking at how small the moon is tonight, I replied softly. The Phantom took a moment before it said, I suppose I must tell you, on the night of the new moon, I cannot come. That night is as dark for me as it is the sky. It has always been that way, and I would not want you to worry. Just the thought of it stopped me a moment before I could piece together what had just been spoken. A night? All alone? I was so accustomed to our visits that it would be such a lonely time for me. With a shake of my head, I found a bit of courage and said, Then I will see you, night after tomorrow. I had said it with such confidence that I would reflect on that feeling later. Good. Now, I must tell you about the red-haired witch who went back to town to banish the mayor. Just like that, we jumped right back to the stories to be told. I didn't mind how on track the phantom liked to stay. It was enough for me to just hear the voice of another. For the remainder of the evening, I happily learned about the red-haired witch who took up salts to rid the town of the mayor. 
Morning came in a flash, and we said our goodbyes. Today would be a good day to venture to the forest, to look around a bit and find some ingredients encased in ice. So rather than taking a rest and letting the nightmares flood my mind, I set out on a minuscule journey. My boots were well worn, my backpack was ready to be filled, and my wool scarf was warm. I had the day planned from start to finish. It had been a while since I ventured for supplies, so my cabinet looked barren to say the least. It started with winter vegetables, and even managed to pull from the river a few nicely sized fish. The forest was vast and sprawling. It went on farther than my eyes could bear to see. It provided so much, and I gave it so little. Hope had begun to blossom in my heart, so I vowed come spring I would return the graciousness to the earth in whatever way I could. I looked out at the landscape, and just over the mountains the sunlight began to fade away. With that image, I turned and began back to my home, with a bag full of food to keep me sated for the days to come. As I walked, I began to hear quite the distressing call. A bird? I thought out loud. A bit of unease filled my steps as I went to the sound. Oh, and what a pitiful sound it was. As I came through the clearing, a pair of crows had a smaller gray bird between them and were tugging at its now torn wings. It didn't have long left, and it was a cruel place to be in the heart of winter. Nature always found a way to feed itself. My feet took two shaking steps forward as my brain laid out the inevitable. It was the circle of life, but as I ran forward, my mind had gone all but blank. Stop! I cried out to the scavengers. It startled them. It worked, and both flew into nearby trees to wait for me to leave so their ravaging could continue. The tiny bird that had been victimized tried to get away, but its broken wings kept it firmly on the ground. Please, it's okay, I won't hurt you, I said as I gently scooped up the shaking mass of bloody feathers. You'll be alright now, little one. I spoke in the same tone the phantom used when I recalled my nightmares. Soon the tiny thing stopped. I believe the shock of its injuries had set in. It was now cupped in my hands as I ran back toward my home. Nature could be so cruel. Once I was home, I carefully washed it clean of all of the blood and wrapped it up in a small blanket made from a scarf of extra fabric. I spoke softly to the bird. I told it how brave it was. It was so brave for still hanging on. Did it understand me? I don't assume as such, but I was trying to give it something, anything. I wanted the small creature to feel some kind of calm in the most horrible time of its life. In a way, I was talking to myself through the little animal. I saw how badly broken its wings were and selfishly thought of my own circumstances. My own wings had been ripped away, and in the cold snow of winter, I was left alone with nothing but fear of the unknown. Two crows were just inches away from picking away at my pitiful corpse. There was a lot left for my body to give in that regard. I was only a broken limb away from giving my body to the earth. As I sat in my rocking chair, I held the bird close to my heart and poured out my sorrows for it. Before the sun could finish setting, the fluttering stopped, and in my palms, I felt the warmth of life seep away from the small creature's body, and the chill cover it so easily. 
It died in my hands as my words pleaded it to stay just a little bit longer. I begged it not to give up as my voice could stop death from taking as it pleased. Death knew all and was unstoppable by a mere fake of a witch. I cried a lot as dusk settled in and evaporated into night. I buried the bird by a willow tree and left it a flower on the freshly disheveled dirt. The bitter heat of fresh tears rolled down my cheeks as I stood and walked to the water. That night there would be no phantom to talk away the pain. So instead I stared out with a heavy heart and resigned myself to those feelings. The chill was all that moved me from that place and into bed. A long day weighed heavily on my shoulders as I crawled in between the covers and allowed myself the release of sleep. The dreams were especially bad that night. I saw myself cowered at the bottom of a deep, dark abyss, calling out for someone to save me. But no one ever did. The voice inside my head spoke out. You are but a mere bird with its wings torn away. You cannot reach the skies and therefore are nothing. You are a puppet without strings to stand with. It mocked me with such malice. I could feel my own hatred bubbling up from my stomach as I screamed into the nothingness. It was then I awoke in a cold sweat. Sunlight poured in through the windows and colored the room with such playful brightness that I pulled the covers back over my head. I didn't want to deal with anything right now. I wanted to wallow in my pit of self-pity. I had dug it with such ease over the last handful of months. There was no attempt to move. I laid there and allowed myself to be rooted to the bed. Even when night fell, my body was too heavy to move. I had exhausted myself just with the circles I ran in my mind. A knock at my front door pulled me from my self-involved fit and drew my attention back to reality. Who... who is it? I asked in confusion. The moon has returned. Would you care for a chat? The figment of the forest spoke with such a gentle tone. With care, I pulled myself from the blankets and made my way to open the door. Do come in, was all I could muster in its directions. The phantom must have seen my distress and floated into the cabin with hesitation. It didn't speak at first. It gave me time to compose myself and explain my state. I had the dreams again. I said as I began the kettle for tea, the ones where you're lost and dying. The phantom hovered just next to the fire stove where I sat. Yes. My voice held a note of tremble to it as I went on to explain the bird I had saved. Tears welled up as I recalled its demise in my hands and the act of having to bury it. It was a short-lived friendship, but to me it was the second in a very long time. Animals didn't judge the way humans did, so it had brought me so much comfort, even if it was just a short period. The phantom didn't judge either, as it spoke soothing words of condolence. A ghostly hand reached out to pet my head and allowed me for a moment just to be in silence for my lost feathered friend. You saw yourself in the bird? The phantom asked me as I delved a bit deeper into my reason for being so heartbroken. I nodded. It didn't offer anything more. It let me sit and mull over the topic. 
The longer I spent on it, the more I understood why the small incident had broken me so easily. I wasn't that hard to read. I took one long look at the moon and heaved out a sigh that danced from my lips in a small cloud. It must have been all over my face, because the hovering form next to me spoke. The moon is lovely tonight. I nodded, not trusting my own voice to not betray the feelings that lingered like a sickness. Once again, that hand reached out, but that time it wrapped around my own. The warmth from the figment was unexplainable. It didn't speak as it pulled me to my feet then and there. I jumped in surprise at the forwardness of my newfound companion. Trust me, it said gently. I managed that much until it began to move outside of my cabin toward the water. I tugged back, and it continued forward, hell-bent on what it wanted. My mind flashed with horrible things, images of an evil ghoul dragging me to the depths. That was it. That was where I died. The only thoughts I could summon in that moment were ones of betrayal. How foolish I was. My boots hit the water's edge with such suddenness, I was no longer on the ground. With its hand in mine, I could only assume it used otherworldly powers to guide us along the top of the lake. Under the waning crescent, the self-proclaimed figment of the forest led my quivering form to the center of the massive pool. Are you scared? I nodded, and it laughed. I told you to trust me. I didn't. Not in the least. My boot-clad feet were on top of a moving lake like it was made of air. The entire situation seemed like a dream. It must have known my trust wavered, so it pulled me close and the scent... It was all too familiar. I wondered how a spirit could have such a soft smell about it, but I had no time to contemplate. Hands were moved and without much notice, we began to sway on the reflection of the moon. We danced slowly together. The only sound was my breath as it eased back to normal. Why are we dancing? I asked. The phantom laughed again and said, Because you needed a break from your thoughts. It was a good enough answer for me. I didn't let my eyes fall to the surface beneath my feet, and instead focused on the stars above. My body moved mechanically. I was not made to dance, but still, I enjoyed it. Wrapped in the phantom's arms, I felt safe and was able to accomplish something no one else had. How many could say they had danced on the water with a phantom? I hoped the answer was none. It hummed an old song I recalled from my childhood, and for that time, I felt safe. I felt cared for. Under the glow of the night sky, it moved me close and with that sweet scent filled me again. All I could focus on were my feet as they moved clumsily and made ripples across the water. The movement sped up a bit, and soon I found myself twirling out alone and hopping back into its open arms. We moved like that for longer than we needed to, and moved in a silent rhythm for only the two of us. The phantom spoke of how far I could go in life if I just released the shackles of self-doubt. I was told of its hopes for me. It was an enchanted experience, from beginning to end. The dance seemed far too brief as we landed back on the shore. I looked up and gave a real smile as my thanks for that pause in my whirlwind of thoughts. The phantom gave an elaborate bow that brought laughter bubbling up past my lips. That night was truly a special one. 
I accomplished so many new things that I had thought long past impossible for an exile like myself. Morning came, and as I swam through my thoughts and the ghostly figure bid me farewell, I stood and wandered back to my cabin, my steps a bit lighter as I did. My feelings had been valid, the phantom explained to me. That was a gift, one that had set me free of my temporary pain and gave me the opportunity to move forward. So with that heaviness gone, and happy memories in its place, I slept away the daylight hours, eager for nightfall again. Night after night, I would rush outside in the snow to meet the figment of the forest. It was a gentle being that brought me so much happiness. Soon the snow melted to spring, and spring blossomed into summer. Our bond only grew deeper as the seasons moved in and out like the tide. Every new moon was a lonely one. The phantom could never visit on those nights. Neither one of us knew why that was. In the beginning, it had caused a great amount of anxiety, but soon I was used to it. It was just another part of our relationship. The nightmares slowly dwindled to a stop, they were replaced with hopeful dreams of a brilliant future. A future I had killed any hopes of. I began to adventure outside of my cabin rather than confining myself to a bed. My heart leapt for sunrises and sunsets now. I grew eager for new recipes using ingredients from traveling merchants. Life had finally begun to untangle and what a beautiful pattern it had made. It was exciting. I was finally excited to be where I was. Each night I spent opening myself to the phantom, my affection grew. My heart yearned to return the favor of glee in life it had given me. I wanted to help return its memories. The phantom of the forest deserved to be whole, just as much as I deserved this happiness. I'm not sure when or where I finally began to realize that it was love that I felt for my companion, but I promised myself that I would find the phantom's memories. I was going to return that feeling. 